Um, if you're interested in helping with a VBS, this church could use your help. If, you, if you'd like to give Pastor Jackson a call, uh, we know that what a blessing that is to us when people help us. Perhaps you'd like to help them. And again, I just want to say thank you for all the work that's gone on here the last three weeks, uh, internally and externally, in the offices, in other parts of the church, in the landscaping. Thank you. What a blessing you are. Thank you to Pastor Ken for filling in last week. And Janet will be gone this coming week. So pray for me and uh, pray for the church that it doesn't all go under without her here. Um, let's, uh, let's have prayer together for the offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can give to your work. It's so important for us to be reaching those we care for. It's so important for us to be touching the lives of children. Uh, we just pray that you would provide for our needs and bless us and help us to continue to faithfully pursue that which blesses your heart. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. If you'd remain standing, please, we're going to read the scripture together. I'll read it for you. That'll be quicker. When Jesus arrived at Peter's house, Peter's mother-in-law was sick in bed with a high fever. Then when Jesus touched her hand, the fever left her, and she got up and prepared a meal for him. That evening, many demon-possessed people were brought to Jesus. He cast out the evil spirits with a simple command, and he healed all the sick. This fulfilled the word of the Lord through the prophet Isaiah, who said he took our sicknesses and removed our diseases. When Jesus saw the crowd around him, he instructed his disciples to cross to the other side of the lake. Then one of the teachers of religious law said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus replied, Foxes have dens to live in, birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place even to lay his head. Another of the disciples said, Lord, first let me return home and bury my father. And Jesus told him, Follow me now. Let the spiritually dead bury their own dead. Such a hard passage. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, in the time we have left, I pray that you'd help me to be a blessing, to encourage us and challenge us in ways that are a benefit. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Now, for the sake of the visitors, folks, what does it mean when a pastor looks at his watch? Absolutely not. Right. Okay, good. So I don't want you to be disappointed and think we're going to get out early. You know, everything in life is about what you believe. We're governed by what we believe, whether we want to admit it or not. And misconceptions can ruin us. Everyone has faith in one form or another. We always believe that our choices are more beneficial than other choices that are presented to us. That's a pretty easy case to make. It's common to believe that God is harsh. I mean, you listen to that... Uh, that passage and some of the words just make you hold your breath a little bit. Some people believe that God is a critic who humiliates people, uh, not a God who acts with love for a reason. But it's important for us to realize that God is the king, not a king. He is the ultimate sovereign of the universe, and one day he will take complete control rather than just having ultimate control. But this is a king who is seeking the best for all, not just the relief of one. Now we live in a day where politicians continually make promises and we're happy or we're disappointed according to how they perform. God makes promises and God makes demands. We may not like them. In fact, you may object to what God does and the truth is, Sometimes I do too. I think, why in the world does he allow that? On the plane yesterday, I was clearing things out of my phone, phone numbers of people who are no longer with us. And I got to a couple of them and I said, that still doesn't sit well with me. I'm still not okay with that. I trust you, but emotionally, I'm still not okay with that. And that's a struggle many times to wonder why God doesn't meet our expectations, especially those ones that we think are really reasonable. 
But God is beyond us in thought. This passage from Isaiah, God said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. And then he said, my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts are, are higher than your thoughts. So that's hard to wrestle with. But one of the reasons we encourage Tristan to trust in his parents is because they have more experience. They have more wisdom. They are beyond him in ways that he doesn't understand and will come to terms with someday. But for now, it's easy to sit, stand here and say, yes, I'll be obedient, I'll be respectful, but we all know there will come days when he struggles with that. And they will love him just the same. But from his point of view, he will wonder, why are they so harsh? Why do they make me do this? Why do I have to do that? Why don't they do things my way? And that will be the answer. Their ways are higher than his. Their ways are more complex than his. They see things he cannot yet see. And when you read the stories of Jesus, you see things that make God appear hard. We understand that Jesus could have healed everybody everywhere with the wave of his hand or the sound of his voice. And yet, he basically limited who he healed to who he came in contact with. And sometimes it looks like he really made him work for it. Go do this. Go do that. Well, if you really believe. Now, Peter's mother-in-law, he walks in and she's sick and he just says, okay, you're better now. That should show you guys how much God values mother-in-laws. Okay? Just so, you know, you're not tempted to make wisecracks the next time. But God's healing is selective. I don't like that. I get frustrated with that. When I pray for somebody, I want them to get up and walk. Don't you? Of course. That's normal. Having people be sick and having people stay sick and losing people that we love, we wouldn't choose that. And yet sometimes God does. He appears very harsh. And then Jesus modeled sacrifice. This guy says, I want to follow you. And Jesus says, well, you can follow me, but I don't have a house. I don't have a place. I don't have somewhere you're going to go at night and you're going to feel safe. Everything's not going to be perfect like you want it to be. You think I'm creating a movement that's just going to make everybody happy and going to help you get your way, but it isn't going to be easy, pal. I have to say, I'd like this whole faith thing to be easier. Anybody else share that opinion? Yeah. And sometimes, depending on how you're doing at the time or what you're experiencing at the time, God looks harsh. He looks hard to deal with. Sometimes, you know, sometimes we say to people, and I think sometimes we say to God, even though we may not admit it, God, I love you, but I don't like you very much right now. Here's this man. He wanted to go along with Jesus because he was impressed. And Jesus said, I want you to understand this is a real sacrifice. If you're going to follow me, it's going to cost you something. So, that's the expectation he sets. People want control of their destiny. God doesn't give us real control over our destiny. Our decision making affects a lot of the quality of our life, but if we're going to really do what he wants, sometimes his choices have to be the defining choices. Now here's the really hard passage to read. Another man comes to Jesus and says, I want to follow him. But he says, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus says, let the dead bury the, their dead. In other words, you come with me now. Now let me make you feel a little better about that. What the man is asking Jesus is to be able to go home and live his life until his father was old and life took its course and so he was set and so when his father was gone then he was free. 
It didn't mean dad was sick and you had to leave him to die. Okay? He was saying, I want to see how this plays out. I want to see if, if time works it out so I'm ready to go follow you. And Jesus said, hey, I want you to follow me now. I don't want you to wait until you see how it plays out. That's why Tristan's decision to follow the Lord is so important. At some point, maybe he will get in the habit of doing what God wants, and that will just follow him. And the benefits of having integrity and mercy and kindness and generosity and morality and all the things that go with being a Christian or should go with being a Christian will be so much part of him that his life is blessed. We don't want him to wait till he's 40 to decide to follow the Lord, even though God would welcome him with open arms. The man said, let life run its course and then I'll come back. Jesus said, no, I want you right now. All of us have to wrestle with that. You may be busy, you may have distractions, you may have goals. God wants you to follow right now. You say, well, pastor, tell me what that's supposed to look like. In some ways, it's different for every person. But that same seriousness is supposed to be there. Just how serious is this understanding about God's willingness to act contrary to our hopes? I mean, think about that for a minute. Maybe you've never wrestled with the idea. God purposely acts contrary to our hopes at times. That isn't what we want from God, is it? But yet he purposely acts contrary to our hopes. It's important because it's the difference between understanding God for who he is and recreating him in a mold that will disappoint you in the long term. Let me give you an example. And let me tell you, the first time somebody taught me this, it made me angry. I went home from church and I said, how dare Pastor Keller say this? Now this is a list, you can't see it, and I'm not going to go through it, for which you're all thanking God at two minutes after 11. Uh, but this is a list of God, some of God's qualities. These things are all true about God. Okay? We don't have a full understanding of who he is by this list, but we have some understanding of this list. And by this, we know that he's faithful and righteous and true and completely aware. And so that is supposed to help us trust him. But what if I add to this list? He can never disappoint me. Is he then the same God? He's a different God, isn't he? What if I add to that, he'll never make me unhappy? What if I add to that, he'll give me as much money as I want? Some people teach, teach that, you know. Is that changing him? Is that remaking him? And that hurts our ability to understand him and to have faith. And if we change him enough, we end up with this. Now, you all would recognize that image from the Ten Commandments, right? The movie? Moses went up to get the Ten Commandments, and the people decided to make their own God, and their own God said, hey, you can play, and you can do whatever you want, and it doesn't matter. There are no consequences. And they worshipped. They worshipped their way with all their might. Do you think the God of this was happy with this? And do you think that they had the same encouragement and hope and blessing as the people who believe this? No. So if we're willing to wrestle with those difficult aspects of who God is and not recreate God, our lives, our hopes, 
can be so much better. What do we call that when somebody fashions something out of a stone or wood or gold? What are they making? An idol. So suppose you don't use stone or wood or metal, but you're recreating God in your own mind. Isn't that the same thing? Yeah, it is. And that's really hard to embrace as an idea. Because after all, people who do that are primitive, right? They're not clear-headed and educated. But God is God. He's the king who wants to act in the best interest of all without necessarily indulging me. I'm selfish enough to tell you, I want him to indulge me. But if I make that who he is, I will be desperately disappointed. So the focus of the day is obedient baptism of a believer. Are you willing to wrestle with that idea? Or are you just considering that God's out of touch or unfairly, unfairly making demands? Would you say that I wouldn't have to consider that even though I'm a believer? Or would you say, maybe I need to pay attention to what God said. Don't answer because I don't want to embarrass anybody. But no matter what God asks, a lot of times a different thought than our own thought is a hard threshold to cross. But maybe in relation to this, Tristan has a lesson to teach us. Maybe he's shown us that being clear in public about who we want to follow is an important component in our lives. And the choice is yours. We have free will. God grants it to us. We make those decisions. And we live with the consequences. What a great opportunity. Some people hang that over your head like it's a punishment. Oh, if you don't do this, God's going to get you. It's like going to the church late and having the choir sing. Don't think of it like that. Think of the opportunity to follow God as the most exciting, most blessed opportunity in the history of mankind. That's what it is. We have the opportunity to obey the living God and enjoy the blessings of that obedience forever. There's nothing I can tell you better than that. We, uh, when we went to the airport, I, I can't walk very far, so when we go to the airport, I get a wheelchair and they push me. Our last pusher in Boston, her name was Bazuma. She was from Ethiopia. <laughs> she was fun. We liked her a lot. She told us that when she was in Ethiopia, she won a visa lottery so she could come to the U.S. because only a limited number of people are allowed to come. And she was talking about how excited she was that she won that lottery. The excitement she had and the excitement you will have over following and loving Jesus will have no comparison in eternity. I wish that for you, all of you. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for our time today. Thank you for the courage and the wisdom that Tristan has shown. May he continue to grow in grace and in faith. May we support that growth. And may we truly be blessed because we think of you as a true and faithful God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, I hope uh, that you'll join us today for Coffee Fellowship. I hope you'll at least take the time to congratulate Tristan and be an encouragement to him. Thank you, you are dismissed. Oh, you know what? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I forgot one thing. Leona's having surgery tomorrow. She's having a knee replaced. And they're going to let that heal and then they're going to do the other one. Not the same day. But uh, pray for her. That's not an easy thing. And uh, anyway, now you're dismissed. Thank you.